So on my third generation Fire TV Cube, I now have complete root access or admin access on my device. Now, if you didn't know, what that basically means is I can disable system packages. I can obviously block system updates. I can disable the stock launcher. I just have complete control of my device. So for example, when I press the home button, instantly we are taken into a custom launcher without any of those funky workarounds or anything like that. Similarly, if I try to check for updates, I click on check for updates, one click, and we can see those updates are now completely blocked on my device. So no more Amazon pushing content to my device. No more Amazon telling me what applications I should have on my device. No more Amazon sending me adverts or sponsored content or promoted applications. I can once again have complete control of my Amazon device. So in this video today, let me show you how you can completely, and I truly mean completely jailbreak your Fire TV Cube, Fire TV Cube second generation and third generation. And once again, get control of your device. So please do take a moment to hit that like button. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. So with all of that being said, let's get started. If you're new to the channel and you want to stay up to date with the latest tech tutorials, the latest Fire Stick, Android and Android TV tips and tricks, then please do subscribe and hit the notification bell. It's a small click from you, but it makes a big difference to me. Thank you. Okay, so to start this process, the first thing you need to do is double check your second generation Fire TV Cube or your third generation Fire TV Cube and check which version of the software is on there. Now on the third generation Fire TV Cube, which is one I'm doing my demonstration on, as long as your current firmware is 3701 or lower, you can follow this process. Similarly, on the second generation Fire TV Cube, as long as your device is running firmware 3337 or lower, you can also follow this process. Unfortunately, if your cube has already been updated, then you can't follow this process. Now, the first thing we're going to do is just enable ADB debugging, which we can see I've done here. Now, I will just say that the process may seem a bit complicated, especially if you're not familiar with typing in ADB commands, but as there are a few processes, the process I'm going to follow, which is the first one, really has minimal risk so you can try it out if it doesn't work then it shouldn't really cause any harm to your device but disclaimer here you have to do these commands at your own risk please do not leave me a comment telling me that you've completely wiped your device or something else because really this is up to you if you want to follow this process and all credit is due to the xda person pro Mius who actually created the step-by-step -step instructions for this process. And I will leave the link to the original post by him if you want to see the other options in this process. Okay, so here are the step-by-step -step instructions, which will be linked below. We can see this is for the second generation cube, which has the code name Raven. And over here we have the same instructions for the third gen cube, which has the code name Gazelle. Now my device that I've done my process on is the third generation cube. Now, as you can see here, Prometheus has given the step-by-step -step instructions. You have a couple of different options. I've gone for option one, which is to give you temporary root. But during that temporary root process, you can quickly go ahead and turn off that protected package list. You can then obviously disable updates. You can disable the stock launcher and really just disable any process that you like. Now, the process involves you downloading a single file, which is this Gazelle Shrinker. Keep scrolling down. And this is the method here, guys. So essentially you're going to download the zip file. You're gonna extract the zip file. You can then push that file into the data local temp folder. And this is a very important folder where you'll be executing this file. Once the file is in this location, you're then going to type in this chmod command, which is basically changing permissions of this file. And you're going to grant the file execute access. So you can now execute this file. Once you've done that, we're then going to type in this command here to actually run the file. Now, when you run this file, you may see an error, like it will say failure a few times, as you can see on the screen. If you see this, the best advice is, is just to restart your cube and run the command again. But if the process has worked, you'll then see a hash symbol. And the hash basically means you now have root access on your device. Now, as soon as you see the hash symbol, we then type in this command here, this then removes some of the security restrictions and we can now run the main command, which is to actually disable the package protection. 
which is this very long command here. Now I do recommend using the Fire TV remote control because you can copy and paste commands into remote ADB shell with that. Either you can do it like that, or maybe if you want to use a Bluetooth keyboard, you can also use that to type in this command. But the command basically begins with the word echo and it ends with this package manager deny list. And essentially you're removing all of those protected packages, like the stock launcher files, like the software update files, all of those files that Amazon blocked us making changes to. Once you clear the deny package list, you can then go ahead and disable any package that you like. After that command, we'll type in two more commands to clear the Arcus proxy and to disable the proxy, which is these two commands here. And once you've done that, you've now pretty much enabled full access to your device. You can then either run these commands here to disable software updates, or even you can now use the old TDUK update blocker, or even the latest launcher manager, which I will show you in just a second. And you can actually use that to disable system updates on your device. Let's jump over to that now. And now because we've disabled that protected manager package list, that means we have total control to disable anything that we like. So we can even open up Launcher Manager, go down into other settings. And here, for example, we can see the Amazon OS updates. I can just click on disable and it's disabled. Or even if you had the older TDUK update blocker, you can once again use the application to quickly disable system updates. And you know that system updates have been disabled because when you go to settings, when you go to MyFi TV, when you click on about, when you click on check for updates, very quickly you get update errors. So no more updates coming onto my device, no more Amazon making changes to my device, no more Amazon deciding which content, which promoted applications, which adverts they want to push onto my device. I now have control of my Fire TV cube. So. Not for everybody, it can seem a little bit complicated because it does require you to type in those commands, but as long as you're running firmware 3337 or lower, you can also follow this process. Also available just in the month of April is a super special offer from IPVanish where you can get complete protection for all of your devices with maximum speed, change your IP address, hide your online activities to get all of that for just over $3 a month. I think it's definitely worthwhile checking out and it does help support the channel. So if you want to do that, really do appreciate your support. So do leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think about this latest version and I'll hopefully catch up with you guys real soon.